I was in New York a couple days ago and I started thinking um, about the old lenses. Uh, yeah, I was looking at the old buildings and the old water towers on top of them and yes, they're still used today. Um, but anyway, it brought me back to the old lenses for some odd reason. Um, and, and where we're at today with the new lenses and, and what's important to us and where we think we need to be with new lenses because everybody wants the ultimate in sharpness, the ultimate in perfection, the ultimate in edge to edge something. They want clinical perfection in lenses. And, you know, on one point I see where, where you want to be with that. Um, and on the other hand, you know, there's very few images that the average photographer puts out that they want clinically perfect. And, and if they are clinically perfect, they're just like everybody else's, nobody cares. And you have the old lenses, which, and, and it's not necessarily old lenses, it's just old design lenses, if you will, um, that aren't clinically perfect at wide open apertures, but give you some kind of character. Now, the irony in this is the same character that you look for in your presets or somebody else's presets that you buy, it's giving the image some kind of character or style. And with older lenses, the character's built in. And some with, you know, with some of these older lenses, you get at wide open these beautiful artistic vibes, if you will, from the lens. And then when you stop it down, you get solid, sharp images. Now, for me, you know, like I'm always, I, I'm in the same mindset a lot of people are that, oh God, I need perfection. I'll do what I want in post. And the, the, the thing that you're missing out on and that I've been missing out on is the old character. Um, that style that you get from a lens that you picked. Um, and, and it, you know, there, there are variations in lenses of the same lens of the same manufacturer. Um, but you, when you get the right one, you just know it. And, and I, I found that with the, you know, the older Leica lenses, like the 50 Summicron and, and not the Apo Summicron, just the straight 50 Summicron on a 60 megapixel camera. Now this lens, I think the last redesign on this was 1979. Um, but the version five, it, it's, you know, it has character at F2. It's not soft, but it has character, if that makes sense. And the 35 Summicron, um, it, they're just gorgeous lenses. Yeah, they've been updated a little bit, but they're relatively still the design, same design since way, way back. Um, but a lot of people won't dare shoot these on a 60 megapixel camera because they don't think they have the juice to do it. So I had a shoot today, so I'm like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the Apple that I have on the side and go with this. And, you, you know, it's that nerve wracking thing of, God, is it going to be sharp enough for the client? And you know, I want to tell you that um, you know, I, I did a job um, yesterday of an interior and I used the 21 millimeter Voigtlander color scope bar. I think it's the F4 version. And when I looked at the images on the camera, I was like, eh. <laughs> then I brought them home and I did them in Photoshop and I was like, and the client literally, the client liked the images. Um, and he did, and he showed me that financially. <laughs> anyway, so um, my thing today is just saying, listen, don't lose out on the joy of a charactered lens. Um, you know, it takes me back to, you know, when, when we used to have to wait for music and, and we'd get the albums and you had the album art and, and the vinyl, the sound of the vinyl. It was just something special that we had to wait for. Everything's instant today and everything's like perfection today and clinically perfect everything. And there's, I don't know, it's just, it's just too clinical. I don't even know what else to say, but, but when you get a charactered lens and you can pop it wide open and go, Oh my God, I love the look of this. And then if you stop it down, you get that almost clinical perfection, if you will, 
um, you have both worlds in one lens. And with today's lenses, you just don't get that. Everything is clinically perfect from the start. Um, and, it, you know, wide open, I remember the Canon 51.2, it was like, and the Canon R5, like everything was just, oh my God, you couldn't screw up with this camera or lens because it focused perfectly every single time. The lens was absolutely clinically perfect. Um, and, and it was boring. <laughs> I don't even know how else to say it. You know, like, you know, I, I know that a blurry background to some is, is art and is what they want. And then they can take it in Photoshop and add all the crap to it. And I don't mean to say that in a, in a negative way whatsoever. Um, you know, because if you like filters and, and presets and all that kind of stuff, I do say make your own so it's your own style versus buying somebody else's to copy their style. But there's nothing wrong with presets. They, you know, they can save you a lot of time in post, but make your own. It's not hard to do, I promise you. You can do it on your own instead of buying someone else's vision of what your photo should look like. Anyway, um, I, I, you know, go out and try an older lens or a, a lens with character at least. Um, you know, Fuji has them with their originals. Now, their, their new line of the uh, 1.4s are absolutely perfection. They're fast. They're, uh, it's everything you would want a lens for a job. Um, but a lot of us do this as a hobby or a lot of us do it because we want to, you know, let our, uh, an artistic release, um, if you will. Um, and for that artistic release, don't be sold on the perfection or the most perfect lens. Buy something that's, that's, not perfect, um, that has character, and, and find one that best suits you and, and your vision. Um, and, you know, everybody thinks, oh my God, you're crazy. Why would you get the M11 and then get the Summicron, <laughs> not the Apo, just the regular Summicron 50 and the Summicron 35? Because I love what they do to an image. I, I love the look of them right out of the camera. Um, and I can still play with them in post. Uh, they're plenty sharp enough. Um, even with the 60 megapixels, they're rendering it fine. But I'll just show you a really quick, I had a shoot to do today and it was just a product shot. And it wasn't like a critical product shot for a brand. It was a, a product shot for a company that just wants to throw it in their social media page and say, hey, we have this stuff, which is great. Um, but you'll be able to see the sharpness when I stop down, is it clinically sharp enough for a product shot like this? We're gonna see it together because I haven't even looked at the photos yet, they're on here. Um, and I used the 50 Summicron, I stopped it down to F8 and then I went down to F11. Hopefully there's no diffraction at F11, I don't think there will be, but we'll find out. Um, and we'll see how good it is. Um, but anyway, I hope this helps a little bit and I hope you go out and get something you know, something special on a lens. Um, you know, they don't have to be $3,000 or $4,000 Leica lenses. They could be anything, like old Nikon lenses, old Canon lenses. They had some, they, some of the lenses just have something special that you can't do in post. No matter how hard you try or how hard you think you're gonna do it in post, you know, when you start with that clinically perfect image and then just throw stuff on top of it, it's just not the same. Um, and it's not the same feeling either. Anyway, um, here's a quick look at the shoot. Um, we'll, we'll see how these, these things did together. And uh, hopefully, and, and I'll take you into the post-processing part of it as well. Um, and hopefully you got something out of this. Um, and go out and buy a lens. You know, they're inexpensive too. You don't have to buy expensive ones. You can get an inexpensive lens and just have fun with it. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Now, again, this is just a quick shoot for a uh, company who sells this product. They just want to show it in their social media page. I was just showing you the black screen without uh, the strobes going off um, in that last one. But anyway, so I'm not like critical on any of this. I'm not too worried about it. I literally just threw up two lights. Here I'm throwing a backlight just to give a little kicker off the backdrop. This is nothing special at all. Like, I mean, literally, I could have shot this with one light, um, but you know, the setup took me literally two minutes. Um, and you can do these with speed lights. You don't need any 
special studio lights or anything like that. But I mean, you know, for a quick and easy job, just to show something on social media, I wasn't too worried about the critically perfect shot. Um, but, you know, I wanted to show you this really quick so you can see what the lens can do. Um, stop down to f8. Now remember, I'm very close to these products. So even at f8, the depth of field is very shallow. Um, and the one critical thing to remember uh, when you're shooting something like this, your depth of field goes further back than it does go forward. So if I focus on this product here, the products in front are going to fall off a lot quicker, um, as you can see. You know, you, th you think F8, oh, you're going to have this great depth of field. Well, if this was much further away, it, yeah, it would have a lot better depth of field. Um, but, you know, the sharpness of this lens is, is great for what I was doing. Um, I didn't need anything special. It wasn't a major job that's going to be printed. It's strictly for social media. And so, you know, in that sense, I'm also going to do everything in Lightroom. Uh, you know, I'm going to crop it, do a little color correction, throw a little vignette on it. Um, do a little touch up on the bottles because I was too lazy to clean them <laughs> and that's it. Now that's a really good thing like if you are doing product shots take the time to clean your products um, you know use a microfiber cloth or a, a canned air just to blow the dust and lint off them. It'll save you a lot of work in post-production. Post um, that I just used a built-in preset in Lightroom. It was just a, like a little bit of a vignette and uh, pulls out a little bit of contrast and uh, clarity. And, and now I'm just throwing a, a spot in the middle to bring up the light in the center. And that's it. I mean, um, the next thing I'll do is I'll do a little bit of touch up on the products. I think only one of the, the products had some, you know, dust or lint or whatever you want to call it on it. Um, and I'm just going to use the touch up tool right in Lightroom. Again, because my end product is going to be social media, this will never be printed. Um, they're not worried about critical anything, you know. So um, this is really simple, uh, and, and it makes life a lot easier if you can just touch up right in Lightroom uh, for these types of jobs. Now, you know, if this was for a print job, and it would be a whole long process, um, but. You know, this is easy to do and you can do it yourself really quick with speed lights. Hope you enjoyed and I do love the lens.